Hello, everyone, and welcome to Slaying Dragons. I am Mike Fuson from Excalibur Data Systems, and I'm joined today by Brian Parks from Synapse Software. Brian, thanks for joining me today. Thanks for having me again. So, Brian, uh, uh, you know, as our viewers may know, we've been talking about the Cortex platform. Um, Cortex being a way for you to look at, read, search, uh, and interact with your data from your ShareWell platform by having the database and Cortex being able to read that database and present the information in a way that's uh, uh, convenient, uh, in a way that's familiar um, to its users. Uh, you know, primary use case that we're looking at um, in today's world, um, Cortex is a platform that's continually being developed. So there's a lot of directions this, this could go in the future. But what we're looking at as a tool set right now is really giving people the ability to, to, to look into their sharewell data. Um, as we've kind of prefaced for a lot of, uh, a lot of use cases um, uh, as to how this whole thing came about, as customers said, hey, sharewell is going end of life. You know, I'm moving to neurons for ITSM or I'm moving to some other um, IT service management or enterprise service management platform, but I have a need to be able to look into my data, um, be that for compliance purposes or audit purposes um, uh, or what have you. <clears throat> and um, as you know, both of us having been consultants um, in that ITSM space for many years, one of the things that you know, we always caution customers about is trying to, everybody want, you know, first thing everybody says, well, can we import our old data? Well, you can, <laughs> it's not a question of being able to, but is it a good idea? Um, because in many cases, as you move to neurons for ITSM um, or a new platform, you may reimagine your service catalog, or you may um, go, hey, we're gonna completely change the way we do change management. And so your old data doesn't fit your new model. And so a lot of times then you're building a bunch of extra stuff to shoehorn the old data in. So you have the ability to see it. Um, and as we talked about in our last episode, one of the great things with Cortex is this could actually be a secure data set because you could actually set the database itself to read only because we're not writing to the database. So we don't need write access. All we need is the ability to read the data and then be able to present it in that familiar and easy format. So with no further ado, I'm going to turn things over to Brian, um, and, and we're going to do, do a little demo for you, kind of show you where we're at with Cortex today. Now, I want to preface this with one of the big things for Brian is, is most of the uh, development of the Cortex platform, the things that you see in the Cortex platform, a, a lot of the stuff has come from community involvement. Um, customers saying, hey, it would be, uh, we would love to be able to do blank and then brian and the synapse team going hey that's a pretty good idea and then they go back to the mad science lab and um poof we have the ability now to do that in some way shape or form um, and the expectation is the continued um evolution of the core tax platform and, and brian and i were having a little chat before we got on to record um is really going to be driven by the community um, where does the community see this thing going? Well, wh what do they find out as their needs? Because as we found working with many systems throughout the years, and we saw it with ShareWell, we see it with Avanti, um, you know, uh, there's a lot of community uh, input into what comes out. And, and, and talking to developers of many platforms that we work with, I always kind of crack up because something will get put out there and we'll kind of talk through how would this work, the mechanics of it. And the developers go, hey, that would be pretty cool. A lot of people would like that. And then, you know, bing, bang, boom. All of a sudden, you know, a uh, short time later, that's a feature um, or capability within the platform because, you know, the, the developers can't think of everything. Um, and they, they want to hear from the people using it going, what else can we do for you? What else could we provide? So um, I'm really, really excited to be able to share with everyone where we're at today um, and we're going to be doing regular updates because this platform is rapidly evolving um, from that community input so brian cortex let's go all right i'll go ahead and share my screen
So I'm going to search incidents for blue screen. And then I'll add a filter. Search a specific field, which is going to be a customer display name. And these are all the fields that are defined on the incident business object. Uh, so if you named it something different, that's totally fine. Cortex will figure that out and will show you the correct field name in, in this list. Uh, so I don't want is not empty. I want is equal to specific value. And we'll type John's name. We'll search. And then we get one record. Uh, apparently, he's only had one blue screen. He must be doing something right. Um, let's drill into that. Uh, but before we do, uh, this grid is pulling the grid definition from the shareable database. Um, so it's exactly as, as you have it defined. Uh, this uses the default grid for, in this case, it's incident. Um, if you change what fields show up here, change the widths of the columns, that gets reflected here in Cortex. We'll drill into that record and see what it looks like. And this might look familiar. Uh, this is pulling the BizUp form uh, information from the from the database, uh, interpreting it and showing on showing it on the screen um, as near as I can uh, figure out it should be displayed in Sharewell. So I'm basically looking at the XML, determining what it says is supposed to happen, and and doing that. Uh, so this has all the same fields that you would expect to see in Sharewell. Uh, it technically has those two different BizOb forms, the um, the default BizOb form, which is just the kind of summary information and the overview form. These links over here that in Sharewell would trigger actions or one steps, uh, they don't trigger actions or one steps because like Mike said, this is, this is just a read only view uh, into the data. Um, so you can't escalate or assign or anything like that. This is just whatever is in the in the database right now and and presenting that to you. Uh, in this case, this this uh, incident doesn't have any specifics, but for uh, incidents that do have specifics that would show up here. And all the information is there. Description, he's getting a blue screen of death every time he boots up. You can see it's for John. And all the other information is there. We can even see tasks related to CIs and journals. We can drill into those as well. So this particular journal entry is not particularly exciting, but we can still see that on September 21st of 2023, Claire uh, changed the value in the Smart Classify search string. Cool. Uh, if we go back, we can also see that if there were attachments on this incident, we would be able to see them. Uh, I do have a few incidents in the demo system uh, that do have attachments on them. And this demo system is live on the, inter on the internet. Uh, I'll give Mike the, the link to this so he can post it with the video. You can go play around with this. Um, it does require a login, but the, the password for all the user accounts is password. Uh, I'm logged in as CSD admin, so you can log in as CSD admin, get the password, password. And you can see everything that I'm seeing. Other things that are included are uh, saved searches. Uh, I did implement that partially as a way to uh, leverage more and more of the expressions because everybody's system is different. Every BizHub form has a different set of expressions. There are tons of different things you can do with expressions. Uh, so I started implementing safe searches because safe searches are, are one of the principal ways that expressions are leveraged uh, to make sure that I cover as much functionality as possible so that I don't have to do additional custom development on your specific system. Uh, so whatever expression you're using in your system, it's probably already supported by Cortex. And if it's not, like Mike said, everything I'm doing from this point forward, most everything I'm doing from this point forward is customer driven, community driven. Uh, if something's not supported, give Mike a shout, give me a shout, and uh, 
if if I'm not careful, I'll have it implemented in a couple of days. But that's not a promise. That's just a, I, I can't help myself most of the time. So Mike, anything else you wanted to say? So, yeah, I mean, let's look at it the other way. So we did a search for a specific incident, but we also have the ability to browse by business object as well, right? We do. Yeah. So if you click browse, you can see major business objects, supporting objects, lookup tables. Um, not all of these on the supporting objects and lookup tables uh, are guaranteed to work right now because we're still finding some uh, kind of gaps. Not all of those uh, business objects have the grids and the forms connected with them just because of the way they're used in the system, right? Um, so if you click on one of them and, don't, and it doesn't have a form associated with them, uh, it, it, it might give you a nasty error message. So I'm not going to click any of those right now, but I, I'm going to click on configuration item, which is interesting for multiple reasons. One, it's not incident. Uh, two, it's a group object, right? So that means that depending on which particular member it is, it might have a different form uh, definition. Uh, it might even have different fields. Uh, and that is all supported directly uh, in Cortex. Uh, so obviously the grid is defined at the group leader level, so that just configuration item. So it can show all different types of configuration items in the grid. But if I click on one particular record, it will show, in this case, it's a computer, I think, workstation, yeah. Um, it'll pull the appropriate biz up form and show that uh, here in what is essentially the form arrangement. Um, and that that also includes all the tabs and all the expressions that go along with the tabs. They're all pulled from the specific uh, group member business object. Um, and yeah, all the information's there. And it's uh, like we've said in a few of these videos, it's a familiar uh, presentation. So exactly the way you'd expect it to see in Sharewell is the way it's showing up in Cortex. So you don't have to wonder if you found the right record. You can actually see that it is the record you expected to see as if you had gone into Sharewell to, to see it. Now, in, in going back and looking at the overall list um, <clears throat> of, say, configuration items, um, I noticed that there's an export to CSV button there. Um, there is. What does that do? Uh, pretty much exactly what it says. It exports this entire grid with the fields that are defined across the top. Mm -hmm. uh, let me get my doc to go away. So just these fields exports them to CSV. Uh, and you'll notice that this actually has several different pages. Um, hopefully that's showing on the it is on the, uh, the screen share. Uh, so it has three pages. This export CSV grabs all three pages. So not just the first page, and then you have to go to the second page and export that. All three pages, however many records there are, 70 items it looks like. So if I click export CSV, it does a little download thing. It is a CSV file. It is .csv. So anything that will read CSVs, including Excel, if you want to use Excel for, for CSVs, if you you know, sending it to someone who's going to write some PowerShell against it, that's fine too. It's just a CSV. Um, and it's all the data that you see in, in, in the grid here. Now, now am, I, am I able, if I wanted other data in my CSV, how would I get that? Yeah, so one of the things that we have on the roadmap is uh, the ability to add additional fields uh, to the CSV export. Um, I'm going to be the one who's, who's writing that code. I'm not entirely sure how I'm going to build that in, but it is something we have on the roadmap. And uh, I'm going to say soon. I'm not okay. going to make any I mean, specific yeah. promises, but soon. I will say <coughs> the more people who ask for it, the sooner it will be. <coughs> so so if there's something you really want to see, be loud about it. So as we can see here, as Brian showed, I mean, you know, you've got that familiar interface um you know when you're looking for records you have the ability to, to search for distinct records um that you know 
could have certain values or you know using the search criteria um, as sharewell administrators and sharewell users we were used to we're using you know a similar search format you know that it that it uh, is or is not or is equal to or you know all of those fun operators um, to give us our outputs that we're looking for um, in those sets of data I know from talking to some customers um, one of the things that they're expecting from an audit perspective is um, what they get frequently is, hey, we want to see um, the onboarding um, records, you know, for Brian Parks when he was you know, onboarded last year, and they need to go get those very distinct records. Um, and so we have a familiar interface that lets us, well, let's go get the, you know, the, the, the records, and they contain onboarding, and you can do these filtering, so you get down to your correct set of records, and then we have the ability to either export it um, or grab a print screen of all of the um, data that we're looking for from an audit perspective, or we can give the auditors access to go look at it themselves if we want to. You've got multiple avenues available to us, um, but this helps solve that audit and compliance challenge of being able to get to those record sets um, and, and demonstrate that we've got the data um, available to us. And at a cost that's very, 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 very reasonable from the from a Cortex perspective, but the overall cost to a customer is they have to have a database somewhere that they can stick it into. It's it's there's there's no gigantic hoops to jump through. You need a database, and then I believe Brian, we need the ability to stick this onto a IIS server um, in most most cases for Cortex um, to 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 function in the you know the, the Windows parlance. Um, we just need to be able to stick it into an IIS server so we can get to the Cortex interface. Um, I've been, Brian has taken me through it a couple of times on setting it up. We'll save that for, for, for a, a, a future um, demo. Um, but being able to get into um, and set it up, it's super simple. Um, there's, there's a few things we fill out basically to tell, the, tell Cortex where the database is. <laughs> um, uh, and... Uh, make sure it has permissions um, to be able to read it, depending on how we've set the permissions up on that database. Um, and that's it. Boom, now you're into your data. And then <clears throat> who who you tell how to get to that is up to you guys, um, uh, you know, as a, as a customer. Um, and now you have the ability to read out any of the data that would sit in your existing data set. Um, and and I, I love it from the perspective of as people make their transition to their new IT service management, enterprise service management platform, um, they can be assured, hey, our historical data is intact and available for what our needs are. And they don't have a, a, a need or requirement or the cost when you get right down to it of migrating that data to whatever that new platform is. And while there are tools and features to do migrations for a number of the platforms on the market, um, the, the challenge is not importing the data. There are a thousand different ways to do that. The question is, is should you? Um, and is it a good idea? And what is it gonna do to this nice new clean system that you've probably set up a bit differently than your sharewell platform you know be that a new service catalog be that new workflows um, for many of your processes um, you're not having to then account for and build unnecessary fields unnecessary complexity um, in order to store that old data um, and one of the questions that we get from customers a lot of the time is well we never took the time to build a knowledge base so you know, we were using our incidents to, to do that. And, you know, there are then, you know, mechanisms to import that data so you can use, but you could use Cortex to get to, to that data, get some data out, start building out stuff that could be then imported into a uh, knowledge management system and then cleaned up from there. You're not having to start over from scratch. You have a way to go look at that data, like show me all tickets where, Blue screen is mentioned because there might have been five or six different things that we had to do um, in order to fix that. And the challenge, and we were, we were just, just talking about this 
um, recently um, with, with one of my customers, uh, one of the challenges that they find um, is that all too often the solution doesn't explain exactly what the technician did to solve the actual problem. Um, and as for uh, one of the platforms that we work with, um, they have the ability in their remote control tool where it'll actually track the different steps you took in the remote control tool in order to fix a situation and kind of almost write that knowledge base for you. And as we see the technology continuing to progress, I mean, I can see Cortex evolving over time where AI is now involved and there's this and there's that and there's all kinds of different doodads and um, tchotchkes that are in there um, to make life that much easier for you to not only interface with a, a set of data and it could be you know we could at, as this thing goes it could be multiple vendor sets of data um, and cortex can evolve into its own thing of a data management platform and a process management platform and an automation platform um, so sky's the limit as we move forward but you know one of the big things uh, uh, when we first when I first started talking to Brian about this and the team at Synapse, um, it was, hey, here's a gap that's going to exist for Sharewell customers as they're deprecating their platform. Um, and especially, you know, since, uh, you know, uh, 2000, end of 20, you know, later, later in 2023, when the announcement was made that, there, made that there's an end of life for Sharewell, folks are going to have to make a move. And as we've said, it could be to Avanti's, you know, neurons for ITSM. It could be to another platform. But then there's the gap of, okay, you know, especially for customers that have been on the Sharewell platform for 10 years. What do we do? What are we going to do with this data? Um, and we're in an industry that we have a look back period or a compliance need. <clears throat> How do we manage this? You know, and solutions were proposed of, well, I mean, you could just take the database slap it on a SQL server, throw SSRS on the front end of that, which doesn't cost you anything, and start writing reports. And that all sounds well and good until you realize you need to know the data model. Um, and the, the, the queries, you know, while you know, I've got folks on my team, you know, Brian certainly knows these, um, it's a DBA level um, sort of effort. It's not something for the for the for, for week of will um, because it's going to be difficult to write those queries correctly to get the data returned in a useful and meaningful format and so you know what i love what brian did is brian kind of took that feedback and you're know, thinking about yeah, well, you could i mean you could stick power bi against it for all that you care sure. and you could get the data out but the amount of effort that's going to go into building that structure in order to get it out is going to be difficult. You can't really see the data. You're going to see the output mm -hmm. because it's a, a share well, as are most systems today, very visual in nature. And so you're used to consuming that data by visually where it is in, in your frame of reference. And so, you know, Brian, you know, Brian took the, took the bull by the horns and ran with it and said, well, what if I give it to you in a format that you're used to seeing? Um, and so you look at it and go, oh, yeah, that is definitely the right record. Um, and I know that because, you know, you start, you know, I think about when you pulled up the CI, you know, that's what we're used to seeing. Okay, yep, that was the correct CI at that point. Or, you know, when you look at CIs in general, some customers, they might have built out their CMDB, but they didn't have it connected to anything. Um, and they had imported it all from existing CSVs, et cetera, and have been managing it, carefully curating it. And now we've got to move. Okay, well, how are we going to get all that data out? You know, Sharewell does provide export functions, but what if we've waited till the last minute? We don't have access to the system anymore. Um, <clears throat> or what if we want another way to ensure We've gotten all of the scraps of data that we need out in a way that'll look at it. And one of the challenges that we really looked at, and this is something that comes up quite a bit, what the Synapse team has done is also given you the ability to see the attachments. And yep. that's no small feat because there's not a way with any of the reporting tools that I'm aware of 
that exist on the market, even the one built into Sharewell, that you can actually see attachments as part of it. So when you start thinking about the audit and compliance, you know, the core reason that this can be so powerful for many customers, that's part of that proof because maybe it has a document they had to sign or you know, whatever. Um, you have the ability to actually see that and uh, confirm um, that all the parts and pieces were there um, as per your process. Um, and ha having worked with um, uh, you know integration teams and development teams and everybody else and looking at okay, how do we see attachments, that was not that was one of the more complicated things to be able to do. And you know uh, uh, that was thought about. Hey, when we were seeing it, that vi you know, not only are you visually seeing the data, but you also can see any attachments that may be associated. So I'm excited. Um, I'm excited to, to, to get this out there to spread the word. Hey, you have a way. And so as they, as customers start to move forward with their efforts to move to their new ITSM platform, as we said, you know, neurons for ITSM, one of the other platforms that are out on the market whatever that customer has chosen, they can be confident that they can license the Cortex technology and they have the ability, just as we've seen today, to be able to, to meet a, an audit or compliance requirement by getting to the data. And this platform is going to continue to evolve over time and give us the ability to see data in, in multiple ways. We don't know exactly where it's going to go because the folks that are implementing this and are using it are going to give us some direction as to the things that are that are needed and things that are important so i'm excited to see to you know, <clears throat> be able to, to to look back we'll be able to look back and kind of laugh look how simple that was in the very very beginning and what it's evolved into over the course of you know you know three six twelve months um as more feedback has come because we do have that end of life date looming upon us and we want to be sure um, that customers can move and some customers are moving now um, some customers will be moving closer to that end of 2026 go live date depending upon what their needs and their organization re requirements are uh, and you know throughout that time you're going to have a way to meet uh, your audit and compliance requirements so brian thank you for joining me today thank you for sharing where we are with Cortex today. Um, I will I will add the little bit. I've been seeing this as it's come along. This is, you know, further and further enhanced. We've we've had our given our thoughts to Brian and um, as Brian said, give him, you know, give him a couple of days and we'll kind of see it. And then as many of us that are partners with the team, uh, with Brian and the team at Cortex, as we've seen it, we've been able to point out, hey, we ran into this issue with Brian pointed out, you know, if you neglected to put a form or, or, or grid on a, which you shouldn't have done. Um, if you were properly trained, you should have a form, uh, a form and a grid on every object in the system. But in those occasions where you didn't, it's going to throw an error because that's how it's displaying the data. And you'd have had the same thing happen in Sharewell. It would have been blank and you wouldn't have known what was going on, but you could have went in and fixed it at that point. Um, but <clears throat> there, there are um, uh, things being worked on to, you know, alleviate those sort of issues. But I mean, I think it's exciting to be able to go down to a lookup table level and go, well, what we're all, you know, we're, we're building something out. We're feeling like we're missing options. Well, what did we have in Sharewell? Oh, that's right. We added the, that, that one because of, you know, this circumstance. Okay. We need to have that in our lookup list in whatever our new system is. Uh, so it gives you some of that capability as you might find gaps as you're, building out and delivering your new platform um, uh, to the customers and, and you, you know, somebody brings something up and, well, we've been live on this platform for a while. What was that? And nobody can seem to remember. Well, let's go look. Let's go look and see what was in that list. Um, so fun times are ahead. I'm looking forward to the continued evolution. Brian, thank you so much for sharing it with us today. Yeah, thanks for having me. All right. I look forward to our, our next uh, chat on Cortex. Everyone have a great day. ExcaliburData.com. Reach out to us. Um, we'll be happy to get you with um, Brian and the team at Synapse and get you your own demo of Cortex. Um, 
you know, get a copy of, uh, of your database and show you, hey, it works against your database. Here's what's required to set it up. And as Brian said, we'll put in the comments um, the uh, a link to a live demo where you can go play with Cortex yourself. Take care, everyone, and we'll see you again soon.